All right, we're going to look at an example two. Where we're going to work through the start of getting the problem and setting up a linear program, graphing it manually, and looking for the feasible, the optimal solution. So here's the input we have. So the key here is when we set up a linear program, the first step we want to do is to define the variables. Second, to define the the objective function, and lastly, to define the constraints. So here, when we think of our variables, what we can choose is we are able to choose one input or a second input. Based on these inputs, the inputs containing the characteristics of potash, phosphates, and nitrates, and that's going to create a fertilizer. So our objective, as it says here, is find the least cost way to mix a batch. So we want to minimize our costs by choosing input one and input two and then subject to the constraints that our fertilizer has to contain so many units of the different characteristics. So to write this out, the first step is to define the variables. So one is I'm going to let x1 be the amount of input 1. I'm going to let x2 be the amount of input 2. Second step is my objective. My objective is to minimize costs. Well, costs are equal, going back to the problem, the cost of the first input is $12 per unit, and the cost of the second is $20 per unit. So my cost is just 12 per unit, and so times x1, which is the number of units I use, plus 20 x2. So now I have my objective function. The third step is to identify or define the constraints. So I have input 1 and input 2. Well, fertilizer needs to have three characteristics. It needs to have phosphates, potash, and nitrates. Well, input 1, as the problem says, provides three units of phosphates, four units of potash, and nine units of nitrate. Input 2, on the other hand, provides nine units of phosphates, six units of potash, and seven units of nitrates. So this is the beginning of our constraints. So if it's three units of phosphates for input one for every unit I use, then I just multiply that by x1 and multiply nine by x2. And this tells me based on how much x1 and x2 I use is in my fertilizer. Well, the fertilizer needs to have at least or provide a minimum. So that tells me it's less than or equal to 45 units of phosphates, 48 units of potash, and oops, that's, we want it to be 48, and then 84 units of nitrates. So this here is what we call our linear program. So we set up our linear program. Now the next step is we need to rewrite this and be able to graph it out. Okay, so I'm going to look at my three, we'll do these in different colors, my three constraints. So my first constraint is 3x1 plus 9x2 is greater or equal to 45. So I'm going to rewrite that such that I can look at x2. So x2 is greater than or equal to 5 minus 1 third x1. So that's the first constraint, rewriting this. Now the constraint for potash, is our second constraint, is x2 has to be greater than or equal to 8 minus 2 thirds x1. And our third constraint is x2 is greater than or equal to 12 minus 2x1. So now I have these three constraints. 
So now the next step is to graph this out. So here's my graph. Let's see, do we see that? Here we go. Okay. So here's my x1. Here's my x2. Let's graph these three constraints. So x2 starts at 5 and goes to 15. Because my y intercept is 5. If x2 is 0, then x1 is equal to 15. My next, my red constraint starts at 8. And if x2 is 0, I bring 2 thirds to that side. I multiply it by 3, divide by 2. So it goes from 8. to 12. My last constraint goes from 12 and then it's going to cut down like this to 6. And now I need to identify the feasible region. Well the feasible region, now note, x2 has to be greater than or equal. So it's not the less than or equal like we did in example 1 but it needs to be greater than. So we're going to follow this line here, the black constraint, until we reach that kink. It's going to follow then the red constraint until we reach that kink, and it's going to follow the blue constraint. So this here is our feasible region. All right, anything above those constraints. Well, now where are our possible solutions? Well, we have our two extreme solutions, and we have our two corner solutions, or kink solutions, if you will. All four are corner solutions. And so we want to think about now is what, how do we solve for these? Well, this solution here is simply 0, 12. This solution here is 15, 0. Well, here, this is where the black line equals the red line. So the black line is 12 minus 2x1 equals 8 minus 2 thirds x1. So we get 4 is equal to 2 minus 2 thirds, which is about 1 and a third. So 4 thirds x1. So x1 equals 3. I plug 3 into either the black or the red line. Let's plug it into the black line. So 6 would be x2. So 3, 6 is this solution here. Let's look at this solution. Okay, so this solution is where the blue and the red line meet. So the blue is 5 minus 1 third x1 is equal to the red, which is 8 minus 2 thirds x1. So I bring 5 there, so I get 3 is equal to plus 2 thirds, which is 1 third x1. So x1 equals 9, x2. Put 9 back into here, 5 minus 3 is going to be 2. So the next point is 9, 2. So these are our four solutions, possible solutions rather. Well, the question is, what is our actual solution? Well, to look at our actual, actual solution, we need to go back to our cost function here. So let's write out our cost function. So our cost function is x2 is equal to our cost divided by 20 minus 3 fifths x1. Well, graphing this line is tough because we have x1 and x2, so we can graph that, but our cost, we don't know that actual number, so we don't know the y intercept, the x2 intercept. So let's just assume that we put our costs, uh, let's put in uh, 400, so our cost would be 20. So 400 divided by 20 is 20, so our cost will be way up here, and it's going to have a slope of negative 5 thirds. All right, well at this point, you notice we're in our, along this line, is what that would be when costs are there. All these, we still have feasible solutions, but we can reduce our cost by moving closer in and redrawing the line until we reach one of the optimal solutions. But the key is which one of these points are we going to be at? Well, if we look at our constraints, what this tells us is if the slope is less than negative one-third, our solution is going to be right where the blue line is. It's going to be right here. All right. If our slope is between negative one-third and two-thirds, it's where the blue and the red line meet. It's going to be here. 
If our slope is between negative 2 thirds and 2, the answer will be right here. If the slope is greater than 2, negative 2, our solution will be there. Now when I say the slope, what I'm talking about is the slope right here. All right, the slope of the demand of the objective function. So if we look, what is the slope of the objective function? It's negative three fifths, which falls right in between negative one third and two thirds. Therefore, the blue and red line meet. This then becomes our solution, which minimizes costs subject to satisfying these three constraints. Now, if the looking at the slopes doesn't work for you, the other way to do that is to look at all four corner solutions, so 0, 12, 3, 6, 9, 2, 15, 0, and plug them into the cost function. And look to see which one of these four is going to minimize your costs. And if you do that, the solution will still be 9, 2.